Welcome everyone to another episode of Salt Air. We are so excited that you're here. I'm Janae Andrus, your host. I am also the community manager for Salt Project, and I'm here with Tom Hatch, the creator of Salt and the perfect person to talk to us today about, about Salt. We're just going to do an introduction into getting into Salt. We're going to get granular on Salt. It's what we do here in Salt Air. Tom, how you doing? I'm doing pretty good. Awesome. So, uh, so yeah, we so want to talk about just the, an introduction to Salt. If someone's just getting started, walk them through it. Okay. So a lot of people think of SALT uh, primarily as a configuration management system, but SALT is fundamentally at its core, a remote execution command and control system that just happens to have the world's best configuration management system built into it. And so uh, what I wanna do is show you all how to set up um, a SALT master and a SALT minion. Okay, so installing SALT is generally pretty easy. Uh, uh, we've got instructions online to install SALT. If you're running a major Linux distribution, um, it generally ships with uh, that Linux distribution's package manager, and you can just yum install, DNF install, apt get install, pacman install SALT. You can download uh, um, an executable and an installer for Windows, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. But in this case, I've already got SALT installed. So the first thing that we do is uh, we start up a SALT master. The salt master is a server that's going to be controlling all of your salt minions. And so then how salt works is that the minions make a per persistent per uh, connection back up to salt master. And so the salt minion itself just has to be configured to know where its salt master is. If you don't configure them, uh, then it can default. It will default to a DNS name, which is salt. Uh, otherwise, you can configure them to go to a specific system. This is a very simple single machine example. And so I'm just uh, telling it that it's on my local box. And so the salt master is localhost. And so now. I can say salt minion, and uh, I'm going to get an error, which is great because the error says exactly what we need to know. The salt master has cached the public key for this node. The salt minion will wait for 10 seconds before attempting to reauthenticate. What's happened is that you don't want to let into your, uh, your group of minions here somebody who's rogue. And so, of course, all of these systems need to authenticate. And so that's what salt key is for. We can see that my laptop, whose name is clearly Fenrir, has attached into this salt master, and it wants me to accept its key. And so I'm just going to be uh, less than secure in this demo and say I'm going to accept all keys. Salt key has the ability, of course, to check fingerprints and validate keys and tell you what the uh, fingerprint of the, uh, of the key is on the minion so that you can fully validate that key. We're not gonna do that right now because this is a demo. But now that that key has been accepted, that minion has connected up to my salt master. And so now it is ready to accept commands. And so we can see that I ran the world's simplest salt command where I just say salt, I give it a target, in this case, everybody, and then a function to run. At its core, what salt does is allows you to run in parallel a, from a vast collection of functions uh, on all of these managed systems. And in those functions, we have everything from um, test.ping, which just says, are you out there? to saying what is the version of the salt minion that's currently running on this remote system, to being able to say... So this is the part where people can really get creative about their own particular needs. Right, because the available functions are beyond vast. So I just ran package.list packages, which listed all of the installed software on that minion. And so you can see, for instance, I really like to uh, <laughs> emulate Super Nintendo games. <laughs> we just got to have fun every now and then, I suppose. 
I mean, N64 is really where it's at, but that's fine. It's just a reflection of exactly how old I am. <laughs> and, and, that, and that you're just so young. I'll take that. I will, I will take that. I'm just, I'm too young for Super I'm Nintendo. I'm so old. <laughs> uh, the Super Nintendo was the prime console of my youth. Okay. <laughs> so one of the cool things about this, though, is that you may have noticed that I ran uh, package.list packages. And the target system is my laptop, so it's running Arch Linux. And it meant, and so it went and uh, looked up the native software management tool for Arch Linux, Pac-Man, but then normalized the out output for me. So if I was connected to an Ubuntu system and a Red Hat system and a Windows system and a Mac system and a FreeBSD system and a Solaris system and an AIX system, then I said package.list packages to all of those systems, they would all return their package information. It would all be formatted the same way. It would all have consistent data. And this capability is something inside of Salt that, that we're really proud of because that normalization across multiple operating systems makes the management of those operating systems significantly easier. And so we also have things like, I can say network.interfaces. And this is going to give me all of my network interface information uh, for all of these connected systems. Again, what's great about this is that it gives us this vast library that allows us to introspect all of these target systems that we're attached to. And that allows us, again, to get really any arbitrary information that we want from those systems. And being able to do that also means that uh, we can ask a question of our infrastructure. And instead of relying on a CMDB, which can be difficult to populate or can be, uh, can be, can be, have stale data, we can get real data and we can get arbitrary data because we can also do things like uh, command.run and say, let's see what's inside of the Etsy directory on all of these systems. And I was able to just execute a shell command and get that information back as well. So we have complete flexibility over what's going to be executed on these remote systems. And so the last thing I want to talk about really quick on remote execution is sys.doc. Every function that's available is, is inside of a built-in documentation. And so that built-in documentation can be accessed by a sys.doc, and I've overflowed my buffer here already, my, uh, my terminal buffer. Let me pipe this to less, because less is more than more, and more is less than less. Because less is more. So Janae probably doesn't get this joke. This is, this is like an old-time Linux joke. So less is a don't. pager in Linux, which has more functionality than another pager in Linux that's called more. And more has um. less functionality than less. Because the person <laughs> who wrote less just made just called it less so that he could have a joke about more. That's amazing. And I appreciate I did not get that joke. And now I have so much more appreciation for that weird thing that you said. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> So, for instance, we've got functions built in that can execute Ansible playbooks. Uh, we've got functions built in that can manage Apache. We've got functions built in that uh, can unzip archives and uh, use archives as software and, configure and configuration deployment. And it goes on and on and on and on. And like there's ButterFS in there and shrouding and cloud integration, and it's a long list because we're at the C's right now, and there are Z's in this list. Well, we're not going to get all the way to the Z's in the time frame we have today, but that's fantastic. I love the walkthrough that you just gave us. Yep. So, so then, what, what would you say is something that you see most often when people are first using salt? What's the most common initial use? And it's, it's a tough question because I know the sky is the limit with salt. The most common initial use is, is configuration management. Um, it is to uh, set up a server and, uh, and configure it in an efficient way. Uh, very common for people to be implementing this inside of DevOps pipelines. Um, 
but there's so many things that we see people use it for. It's not just used for um, test infrastructure. It's not just used for being able to build uh, container golden images inside of pipelines. Um, and it's not just used for configuring and managing uh, virtual machines and hardware. Uh, so it's also used to communicate with and manage network devices. It's also used for IoT devices. One of my favorite use cases was when I found out that a major cruise line, and this is years ago, this is back in, uh, I want to say 2012, a major cruise line had decided to use Salt to manage every device on their ships. And I wow. found out about this only a few weeks before I was going on a cruise. With that <laughs> and you still line. went. I feel like that's the biggest testament to Salt <laughs> I've ever heard. <laughs> But it was fun to be able to say to my kids, hey, salt, my software is installed on that TV and that console down the hall, down this cruise ship hallway. Um, and those, okay, those so are I'm also sorry. those use cases that are, that are really fun. That's really fun. I love it. Um, and that's why we love salt, right? Because it can be in everything, which I know is a big part of why you named it salt in the first place, which I'm sure we can mm -hmm. talk about another time. No, I appreciate everyone being here today and listening to Tom, who we love to listen to and going through an introduction to getting started with salt. If you don't want to miss anything else in our salt air episodes, as we get granular on salt, please click subscribe below so that we can talk with you next week and you can hear more about salt. We're excited to connect with you. And if you want to hear more on the salt project, you can always find us at saltproject.io. Thanks everyone. Have a great rest of your day.